Number five, Bill Parcells, pretty much legendary coach. A lot of swearing, a lot of vul just a lot of vulgar language, a lot of uh what can I tell about this man? This man is something. He's a great coach, that's for damn sure. It's just um he's just very vulgar. He's uh very expressive in his words. He he will tell you when he's um when he's mad, when he's upset, when he's discouraged. He he really will. He's he's pretty good at that. Um <laughs> Honestly, there's not much else I can tell you, but that this man is, yeah, he's just super, yeah, uh, he's very expressive. He he will tell you when he's not happy with the play. He's just one of those really hard-nosed coaches, but that's a big reason in his style, and really it's worked for him, and it's worked for him in the NFL, honestly. Let's just take a look at his entire track record first, and it goes all the way from 64 to 78 was all in college. I mean, Hastings College, Wichita State. Army, Florida State, Vanderbilt, Texas Tech was all linebackers coach at Army. He was a defensive coordinator. I mean, you know, he was he was pretty good at the defensive side of the football. Became a head coach at Air Force Academy for a year and then transitioned to the 80s. And in the 80s, 80, he went to New England as a linebacker coach. 81 through 90 was a New York Giant in the New York Giants organization. Uh, the first two years he was a defensive coordinator, then he transitioned to head coach, and he wouldn't look back after that. He would be the head coach of the Pats, he'd be the head coach of the Jets, and he'd be the head coach of the Cowboys, and they all had some certain success in there, um, and it showed the success they had. Honestly, he was very successful. So why don't we just take a look at exactly what his track record is in the NFL. First of all, the fact that he started off his first year 3-12-1, the New York Giants was not great, but then transition nine and seven team, they lost. They won a game though in the playoffs, and then they lost eventually. Um, then ten and six again, played two playoff games, they lost in there. And the next year, four, fourteen and two, eighty six, they won the Super Bowl that year with Phil Simms. After that, they went down a bit, six and nine, ten and six, ten and six. They didn't even make the record, the the playoffs. Twelve and four, he did lost in the playoffs after one game. Giants 13 and 3. You're looking at upsetting the Buffalo Bills. So that could have been a loss, but now they won a Super Bowl that year. I mean, pretty good record. 13 and 3 is not bad. Um, and then didn't really um, become a coach till 93. 93, he got a call from the New England Patriots. He went from 5 11 to 10 and 6. They lost in, after one game, went back to 6 and 10. Then went back to 11-5, and five, got to the Super Bowl, lost to the Green Bay Packers. But they got to the Super Bowl, AFC champs. After that, 97, transitioned to the New York Jets for three years, went 9-7, and 12-4. They lost after two games there, and 8-8. Eight and eight. Then, four years later passed, Dallas Cowboys ring him in, becomes a Cowboys coach, 10-6 and six the first year. They lose him after one game. The Cowboys six and ten, then nine and seven, didn't even make it. Two thousand six is last year as head coach, nine and seven, and they lose after one game. So overall, his entire career, thirty one times he has um, challenged, and fourteen he's won. So overall, that's pretty decent, pretty good, and uh, overall, it's gotten to Super Bowls, it's gotten them to, you know, to really be. You know, he's, he's been a really big influence on a lot of guys. And, I mean, you got to look at exactly who he actually employed. Bill Belichick, Todd Bowles, Tom Coughlin, Romeo Cromel, Al Groh, Todd Haley, Eric Mangini, Chris Palmer, Sean Payton, Tony Sperano, Mike Zimmer. Like, he, all these guys were through him. And that shows exactly how quality of a coach he is when he had Bill Belichick as his defensive coordinator and an assistant and linebacker. Like, that's pretty awesome. Like, that, of course, he deserves to be in the Hall of Fame because getting those guys' jobs and they're, you know, those coaches, not, not bad at, at being coaches. So, you know, Bill Parcells, fantastic coach. Number four, Chuck Knoll. Chuck Knoll, a legend in Pittsburgh, a guy that brought football really like not brought football but really like 
made Pittsburgh what Pittsburgh is now, which is a bunch of winners. Like, before that, honestly, Pittsburgh wasn't that kind of team. Like, they were, you know, they were a Steel City cool, but they were nothing really to fear. It was... You know, it was more of a time at that time before they started reigning the 70s. It was, it was more of a anyone's team, you know, like the Colts for sure, you know, but they didn't, you know, it was more of a Green Bay kind of feel, you know. It was just football being played. Really, it just felt like defenses were not going to win. It felt more like offenses had a better chance than defenses to win. I feel like Pittsburgh really formulated what is now defense wins championships. Honestly, I feel like, Pittsburgh, besides Green Bay, Green Bay, yes, but Green Bay also had a really good deep, uh, offense. Pittsburgh, on the other hand, like, they had a dynamite defense, so it's it really proved that defense does win championships. I feel like Pittsburgh really kind of put that into people's perspective and mind that, yeah, you know, defense is very important. It's not all about scoring points. It's about getting stops and key, and key things, and I think that's a big thing that they that really – was introdu- introduced to the game of football. Um, I think Chuck Noll has to have some credit for that, you know, and his staff, of course. But Chuck Noll, fantastic, fantastic guy. Pittsburgh Steelers, only team he had coached. So that's how you know, like, loyalty, that's great. Um, let's take a look at how he started. It all started in 1960 when he was a defensive assistant for Los Angeles Chargers and became that San Diego Chargers, was a defensive assistant for the Chargers from... 60, 60 to 66, and then, or 65, and then 66, 67, 68, defensive backfield. So, um, was a part of pretty good defense out there in Baltimore. And then 69, he took the job in Pittsburgh and didn't really give it up until 91. Um, and that's just, honestly, it's a fantastic feel is that you can honestly, as a, as a coach, just continue to be the guy you know and working for Don Shula and Sid Gilman that's that's pretty great you know that's a lot of knowledge you'll intake and on top of that employing guys like Tony Dungy like a John Fox like a Bud Carson that's that's pretty great too so I think you know he's got to have respect for the people that he's employed they became fantastic and you know Tony Dungy's a Hall of Famer now and you know he was he was there for Chuck Noll that's fantastic um so let's let's start let's take a look at what we got here it all starts with his first year in Pittsburgh. They were one and thirteen. The next year they were five and nine. The next year they were six and eight. And people were thinking, are they ever going to improve? And they did. Seventy two was the year. Eleven and three record. Yes, they lost after two playoff games, but they made it to the playoffs. And that was a big, big deal. Seventy three rolled around. They became ten and four. They lost in the playoffs again. After one game, but they made the playoffs consistently. Okay, cool. The next year, 74, pretty much defense, offense, everything was clicking. And they became 10-3-1. and three and one. They got to the Super Bowl, and they won it. They won the Super Bowl. And then the next year, with the 12-2 and two record, they won the Super Bowl again. And just like that, they were back-to-back champs. In 76, they went 10-4. and four. They lost in two games in the playoffs. They got there. People were a little bit disappointed. They thought they definitely should have been Super Bowl champs once again. And then 77, again, 9-5, and five, lost after one playoff game. So 78, people were like, well, is that it? Are the Pittsburgh Steelers ever going to reign again? 78, they showed up, and they, whew, they lit the league 14-2 and two, and a Super Bowl championship once again with Chuck Knoll. Once again, getting a Super Bowl title. And then 79, another title for them. With a 12-4 and record, won the Super Bowl title. And all of them were, they were tough games, but you already knew they were going to win. They just had a better team than all the teams that they faced in the Super Bowl. So honestly, you just got to give them a lot of credit. And then after that, you're looking at a 9-7 and record. 8-8, and 6-3. And, and they did make uh, the playoffs, but they lost. 10 and 6 losing the playoffs, 9 and 7 losing after two games in the playoffs, 7 and 9, 6 and 10, 8 and 7, 5 and 11, 9 and 7 losing after two games in the playoffs, 9 and 7 and 7 and 9. Overall though, 193 victories though and 148 losses and one tie. Overall, it was above 500 that he he brought the Steelers to. 
He had a 16 and 8 playoff record, so that's fantastic. And an average rank of 2.1 pretty much is when where they were. And on top of that, he brought Pittsburgh four Super Bowls. Four. Pittsburgh has six now. That's all they've added was two more. But if it wasn't for Chuck Noll, Pittsburgh would just have two. With Chuck Noll, four. Oof. That's big, dude. He brought a dynasty to the Steel, Steel City. And it made them one of the most feared franchises now still. Because they have six Super Bowls, you know. So, honestly, Steelers wouldn't have been the Steelers without Chuck Noll. Number three, Bill Walsh. You guys all should know Bill Walsh. You guys know Joe Montana. You guys know Jerry Rice. You guys should know Jerry, uh, Bill Walsh. <laughs> I was about to say Jerry Walsh. Um, but uh, Bill Walsh. Bill Walsh is, like I said, he is Bill Walsh. He's one of the best coaches I've ever, you know, ever. And, you know, deservingly of being top three, of course, because he changed San Francisco football forever, honestly. I think without him, the Bay Area wouldn't be what they are in terms of the 49ers wouldn't have had the reputation of, oh, you guys are having losing seasons? You guys are the San Francisco 49ers. It would have been like, oh, you guys are having losing seasons. Yeah, you're the 49ers. Like, they were losers. They, they literally could not win anything. They were terrible. No one wanted to be a 49er fan in the 60s and 70s. No one. But he changed it all in one decade and only coached in the pro football era for only 10 years, dude. And he was able to make a big impact on it. And he got great guys, actually, on his staff. You're looking at, first of all, he worked for Paul Brown, which is fantastic a pioneer of the game, but then he and the people that he had on his staff, George Seifert, Mike Holmgren, Dennis Green, like those guys went on to be super successful coaches, you know, win Super Bowls, um, Dennis Green was close to it, he actually, you know, having Randy Moss, Chris Carter, that great offense in 98, you know, that was, that was Coach Dennis Green there, like honestly, great staff he was able to, to have, and a guy that's just fantastic. Of course, he deserves to be a Hall of Famer. Bill Walsh is, like I said, one of those guys that's like, he changed football, just like Chuck Noll changed the Steelers. Well, the 70s were the Steelers era. The 80s were, yeah, the 80s were the 49ers era. They are what they are. And Bill Walsh changed so much. And like I say, he changed in, he changed the coast. He changed the the, the Bay Area, but he also changed, like I said, the, the coast, the coast of uh, of the West Coast, you know, I mean, you got a lot of teams from that eastern seaboard, and now you're having teams from the western, you know, uh, seaboard there, now it's like, whoa, okay, those guys can ball, not just those east coast fellas, like west coast people can also do stuff that you guys can do, so I think he definitely put a, a, a big spotlight on that. Um, so anyway, let's just take a look at, at what he's done. Um, besides that, he's looking at started his entire career in 68 um, and worked for the Bengals till 75. He was a receivers coach and a quarterback's coach. And then in 76, went to the Chargers for his offensive coordinator. 77 and 78, went to college as a head coach of Stanford. And then 79 from 88, the 49ers head coach, where his first year he would be 2-14 and it would be horrendous. Then it'd be six and ten. Then they would go and jump all the way to a thirteen and three record. You all know about the catch. They went to the Super Bowl, won it there, Super Bowl champs. The next year, three and six. That's not great. But then the next year, nineteen eighty three, ten and six. They lost after two games. And then the next year they were eighty four forty niners, one of the best teams of all time, fifteen and one record. I mean they were unstoppable at the time. Super Bowl champs easily. 85, 10 and 6, lost in after one game, 10 and 5 and 1, lost after one game, 13 and 2, lost after, lost after one game, and then 88, 10 and 6 record, went to the Super Bowl, boom, they won it, you know, three Super Bowls for the 80s era to be named the 80s team, the 49ers, like, 
like I said, changed the culture, changed everything, and just a great, just a legend. It's a legendary coach. So, number two, Bill Belichick. <clears throat> what can I say other than that? Bill Belichick. You love him or you hate him. You got to respect the guy. The guy has been able to really work with more, with less, honestly. Um, I mean, he's had to deal with a lot of injuries, and the guy still gets it done. I mean, you're looking at a guy that's a five-time Super Bowl champion. Technically, he's won more, you know, being he was a part of that giant staff that won the Super Bowl. So, I mean, you would, you should put him down for six. You know, overall winning six titles, that's that's that's, that's something. Um, and, uh, yeah, no, he is... Uh, He's one hell of a full player. He is fantastic. He always gets it done. He's always going to get him to the playoffs. And he's just one of those guys that, honestly, you, you know, you love him or you hate him, honestly. But, I mean, what has he done, honestly, like, looking at who he worked for, it's great that he got to work for a Bill Parcells. I feel like working for him really opened the door for him. And, you know, like I said, he's employed guys like Romeo Cornell, which he was on the same team with the Giants that won the Super Bowl. You know, he had Al Groh with him. He had Eric Mangini. He's had Josh McDaniels. He's had Bill O'Brien. He's had Nick Saban. You know, Jim Schwartz was there for him for being scouting-wise. So, I mean, some of those guys were head coaches. Not Some of them weren't great, but they weren't terrible, you know. And he's had a great staff. He's had the luxury of having a, a Brady, but, I mean, he's had a lot of injuries. He's traded guys that maybe you're like, why would you trade him? He's a star and prove that you don't need him to win the Super Bowl. But that's that's a big thing. Um, and uh, looking at his entire coaching history, I mean, 75, it started all. He was a special assistant for the Baltimore Colts, 76. 77, he was an assistant special teams, tight end, wide receivers for the Lions. 78 was an assistant special teams defensive assistant for the Broncos 79 all the way to 90 I believe he worked with the New York Giants I mean special teams he was the linebackers coach he was a defensive coordinator and a secondary coach and then you're looking at 91 to 95 Cleveland Browns head coach I mean at one point he was a Cleveland Browns head coach he wasn't that great and then 96 he got the chance to be an assistant head coach Secondary for the New England Patriots, who would have thought he would have been head coach for them uh, eventually. 97 through 99, assistant head coach, secondary coach. And then not two, in 2000, he got a shot. Head coach of the New England Patriots and hasn't changed one bit. He is still the head coach of the New England Patriots. Uh, fantastic dude. Um, now at 65 years old. I mean, what can I say? He's, yeah, he's been been living the life honestly I mean a coach that just wins and wins and wins I don't think you would get tired of it um, so let's just take a look at his whole tenure first of all in 91 looking at 91 through 95 with the Cleveland Browns he went six and ten went seven and nine seven and nine and then led him to an 11-5 record in 94 where they lost in the second playoff game and then back to five and eleven fortunately didn't go back to that and uh, 2000 is when he got the call to be New England Patriot. And from then on in, you will see 5-11 five, five and 11 in his first year. They got to 11-5. and five. They shocked the world by beating the St. Louis Rams. And then when the Super Bowl, first title, you thought, okay, wow. This Brady kid, this Belichick guy, not bad. But then something kept happening. 9-7, 2002, didn't make it. The next year, 14-2. You know, they were fantastic. Won the Super Bowl. 2004, 14-2. Won the Super Bowl back-to-back. -back. That's three Super Bowls in four years. So now they're starting to be kind of a dynasty in the 2000s, you know. And then you're looking at 10-6. and six. They lost after two games. 2006, they, lost, they were 12-4. and four. They lost in the AFC Championship. They could have been in the Super Bowl again. 2007, they were perfect 16-0. and 0. They lost... In the Super Bowl, AFC champs, you know, we all know about that underdog story of the Giants, but they got to the Super Bowl, then an 11-5 and five record, didn't make the playoffs there, 0-9, 10-6, lost after one playoff game, 
fourteen and two. They lost after one playoff game. Thirteen and three got to the Super Bowl. Lost again to the Giants once again. But they, he got to this. They got them to the Super Bowl. Then on top of that, you're looking at twelve and four record in, in two thousand twelve. Lost after two games. Twelve and four again. Lost after two games. Twenty fourteen. Twelve and four. I would kind of say they kind of shocked the Seahawks because I feel like Seattle was a better team. It was just New England was just more prepared, and they just had more things up their sleeve. Also, Seattle really messed up. I feel like they should have won that Super Bowl, but it is what it is. They're Super Bowl champs. That's four rings for Bill Belichick. And then on top of that, 2015, 12-4, yes, they lost. But they lost in the AFC Championship game. And then 2016, we all know about that unbelievable comeback. Had a 14-2 record. Won the Super Bowl. Five rings. Five rings. And like I said, just overall, dynasty in the 2000s. Trying to be a dynasty in the 2010s. Overall, fantastic coach. Just got to give him his props. And the best coach of all time, Vince Lombardi, number one. I don't know if you guys would be disagreeing with me on that. I just really believe Vince Lombardi's entire, really his entire coaching aspect, everything having to be this way, you know, having to be formation, having to be discipline and discipline and discipline. Like that's an Italian thing. Um, I'm, I am um, genetically in my background, I am Italian, so I can understand exactly what it is. Like every play's got to be perfect and, you know, you screwed up. All right, we got to continue to practice. We got to continue to get better. Like championships. All right, cool. We got to get another one, though. We got to get another one, though. We got to get another one, though. And to me, this just, for me, Vince Lombardi is, you know, is kind of the testament of what a coach is, of what football is all about, of what life is all about. Because he teaches more to you about than just football. He teaches you about life. He teaches you about how to be a great person, how to, you know, how to be a better teammate, how to be a better man. And I think all the team, all the players can attest to that. I just can see from films, I can see from interviews, a man that's well-respected. Even if he's really harsh and, you know, it was tough love and stuff. In the end of the day, he cared about his players and he just wanted to see success. And it just, you know, there's a reason his name is on the trophy, dude. It's the Lombardi Trophy. It would definitely would have changed if Tom Landry would have won that ice bowl, though. But it is Vince Lombardi overall. He's a strategist, and he's fantastic. And it got him done. It got him a lot, a lot of things done. So why don't we look back and look at what we got here. Um, first of all, Vince Lombardi. Started off as a New York Giants offensive coordinator from 54 to 59, in his 40s actually, um, and then got the head coaching job from 59 to 69, so um, was a Green Bay coach, 69, got a second opportunity with the Redskins, but that didn't really go too well um, for him. He was He's just a Green Bay Packer for life, so always will, honestly. Um, so, I mean, looking at it, I mean, started out in 59, they went 7-5, and five. 60, they were 8-4, and four, lost one one playoff game, that was it. 61-11-3, they won the NFL championship at that time. There was no Super Bowl, so that was their championship, and he won it. Then 13-1, won the NFL championship back-to-back, then on top of that, 11-2-1 and and in 63, 64, 8 and 5 and 1, and then 10 and 3 and 1, won the NFL championship there. 66, a 12 and 2, first Super Bowl ever, won the Super Bowl, first Super Bowl. And then 9 and 4 and 1, they won the second Super Bowl with, really with ease. Uh, their defense was just that great. And then his last co real coaching stint, 7 and 5 and 2 as the Redskins, didn't get anywhere there. But, just to know that this is what he got. He got done a lot for Green Bay. If you look at NFL championships slash Super Bowls, I mean, honestly, you're looking at a team that's got about what? You're looking at three, two right here. That's five. And then you had 96. You had 2011 in there. You know, 
I mean, that's seven. That's the most ever in pro football. That's pretty great, actually. And just to see just the success that Lombardi really brought to this organization. It's the reason they're called Title Town. You know, there's a reason there's a lot of names for Green Bay. That's why they're respected as, first and foremost, as Vince Lombardi's presence and what he brought to the city. Fantastic. Fantastic man.